Hi, this is Andy from GPS Training. In this video, I'm having a look at the Instinct 2 Solar Watch from Garmin that I've been using for hiking in place of my handheld device, just to see how I get on with using the Instinct 2 watch. The one thing I've sort of missed is the larger data boxes that I tend to see on a handheld device with information about your distance traveled, estimated time of arrival, etc. They're all there on the watch, but normally as default, they're on one screen. So they can be a little bit small, just with me wearing some reading glasses but a nice tip on all of the Garmin watches and I'm going to use the example on the Instinct 2 Solar here we can make that information appear on just one large data field and then you just scroll down using the simple up and down buttons to get the screen you want and the information. So as default Garmin have a navigational setting on the watch so whichever activity you select whether it be hiking, walking, running, whatever activity you set in the watch whenever you're navigating a course so this is potentially a GPX file you've sent to your watch a route you've planned in some software you automatically have some navigational boxes appear they're the ones I'm going to look at changing first rather than the default data boxes that we see for the activity. So I'll just give you an example of that now. If I was to go onto my hike profile by pressing the GPS button top right, select hike. This is the standard data boxes that would appear if I was just recording my hike and not navigating. But I'm just going to load a simple course that I've sent to the watch just to give you an idea of the screens that we see. So I'm going to go middle button, I'm scrolling down to navigation, Select courses. I've only got the one I think on this watch. There's the course here. And I'm just going to say do course. So now on the watch, if I start the recording, as I scroll down the screens, this is what I would see as default. Time of day, nice big screen. Elevation profile's great. This is the screen I'm talking about. This is the navigational screen that I'm going to change in a second. So we've got estimated time en route, distance remaining, ETA. And then we scroll down, we've got Ascent Timer and Distance. That's actually one of the standard um, data box fields for the hike profile. Heart rate, and then back to the map. So I'm just going to come out of here now. I'm just going to stop the recording and come back out and discard it. And then just show you how we can change those navigational boxes. Just to summon a bit bigger with the data. And how you can add different data fields as well. So I've just come out of there now and just stopped that activity and I'll just keep pressing the back button which is the bottom right hand button to come right back out. So to go into those extra boxes that appear when you're navigating a course that you've sent to your watch, I'm going to hold the middle left hand button in just for a few seconds till I get the initial screen that comes on that says watch face. Use the down button, the bottom left hand button, just to go down to the option navigation. So when you're on this option, this navigation screen, whatever we see in the screen set up here, whatever activity profile you're on, these are the extra boxes that appear separately to the data boxes that are set up for the activity profile. So only when you're navigating something on the watch like a course. So if we go into navigation, first option is data screens. So the map you can turn on or off. I would always have that on if I'm navigating. That was a nice decent size on the one screen. Elevation plots on. Again, that was a nice size. I'm happy that's on one screen. But you see here, if I go screen one on, screen two is off. So screen one, if I select it now with the top right hand button, you'll see this is the one that has the heart rate in the top circle. ETA, distance remaining in ETA. So if I go back down, Keep going down to layout till you see layout. This one says four fields. So that's the three strips we could see across the screen and the heart rate one in the top right. So if I change the layout now by selecting the top right for layout and then you'll see as I go up or down with the buttons on the side, it changes to what you're going to see. So you can then change whatever's in the data box. Of course, I can make it lots of data on the screen which is what I'm finding too much. I'm just keep scrolling up or down till I find the one that I want. So this one here means I'll just have the heart rate in the top right in ETE so the estimated time en route is a nice big screen. So if I select that now to save it with the top right hand button that one is now saved and I can just hit the back button to come out of there. And all I would do is I'd then go down to screen 2, turn screen 2 on, go down to layout it says five fields, so I'm going to change that one to exactly the same as what I've just done on that first one. So I'll change it here to 
just get it onto one that's this one is one field so it's heart rate at the top and whatever I want now this one's actually got location which is a good option show you how we select that so we move down to field two so it's got location in but then I have all the various options where it could be a distance field if it was to do with navigation so let's go to the navigation fields distance remaining so that's a nice one if you're navigating a route again it's all personal choice to what you might want to see so I can scroll up and down all the choices here that you can see so many choices ETAs there estimated time of arrival but I actually quite like the one to do with distance to destination especially when I'm navigating a course and you want to know how long you've got left so um, distance remaining select that and then if I hit the back button there now that's screen two and if I go down to screen three, I'm just going to do one more as an example. Turn that on, go down to layout where it says <clears throat> three fields, select that. And again, I'm just going to make it the two fields again where we've got the one main one and the heart rate at the top. Select that with the top right hand button. And then field one, I'm leaving as the heart rate as I have done on uh, the previous ones. Field two. I'm actually going to select one here in navigation which will actually show my current grid reference so I've changed this watch to Ordnance Survey British Grid in the system settings and format so if I go to navigation fields and I'm going to scroll down to one that is to do with location there and then we'll give you an example of that now so now if I just keep hitting the back button to come out of here now and just show you the difference now so if I st start my hike Go into navigation with the middle left hand button, scroll down to navigation, select navigation and my course, select my course to navigate with, I'll just start the recording with the top right hand button. Now when we scroll down, so we just simply use the up and down when you're walking and hiking, I've got the elevation profile, the time of day is a nice big screen come down we've got ETE now is a much bigger screen rather than seeing it on that smaller face with the three data boxes heart rate still in the top right distance remaining I haven't started moving yet I haven't got a satellite signal so it's not until I actually get onto my course and start walking that figure will appear but it's going to be a nice big size heart rate at the top right and again once I've got a satellite signal of course I'm inside the building at the moment I'll actually get my British national grid or whatever grid system you've set in your watch displayed there and then when I move down I'm now onto the standard data field that we see for hike which again I can change that in exactly the same way and make it different pages which are much easier to see so just to show you how we do that just as an example very similar to what we've just done so I'm actually just gonna stop that recording with the top right hand button and just hit the back button just to discard it so just go down to discard and then I'll just show you finally changing the data boxes for the hike in the same way I'll just give you one example because it's the same process of what we've just done so with hike selected from the top right hand button so hike, I then hold the middle left hand button in until it goes to hike settings. Press my top right hand button where it says data screens. We're seeing exactly the same as what I've just done for the navigational screens. So this is the data screen that I see as standard when I'm just recording and not actually navigating. So I go data screens. It's got the first screen here. And if I press the top right hand button, I can do exactly the same. Change the layout. Sorry, just go to layout first and select it and then change the layout to what you want to see so again I could make it just simply one box with the scent select that and then come back out of there and then if I now go down with the down button and get right down to the bottom I get the option add and then I could add a page you would select something like custom data it's only shown one field now again I can choose the layout by going up or down but if I only want one field and then heart rate in the top press the top right hand button field one I can scroll down until I get heart rate if I want it to be a heart rate one so there's my heart rate field two is the main one could just be a simple timer field timer how long I've been going for um, you've got all the different options of what you can pick there and then if I hit the back button see it's got a timer in there come right back out now and just to show you that now press hike start the hike recording and now all I've got is a simple ascent heart rate map screen time of day and the timer so it's just giving you some examples of how you can change the data boxes if I started navigation I'd then get those extra navigational boxes set up that I've set up 
so I'll just do that now do course so now as I scroll down we're getting the extra ones like the map we'll get the elevation one and then of course I've got my ETE distance remaining and location and it's as simple just going up and down with the up and down buttons on the side but it's just changing it from having three or four data fields on the screen to one nice large one which I just find a lot easier potentially just because I'm wearing reading glasses but it's just a nice tip to hopefully get the best out of your watch when you're using it on a hike so we hope you found this video useful if you do purchase a product from GPS training from our gpstraining.co.uk store where we sell watches and handheld devices you do get access to an online training course for a year from ourselves as well as email and telephone support and on the online training course we've got many more videos that cover things in more detail like this video i'm showing you changing the data boxes and thanks for watching